Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Muscle420 and I'm coming at you with another build video. Uh, it's been a while, I know, since I've posted a build video. However, I am really excited about this build that I've uh, kind of crafted. It's, um, and I say kind of because I didn't really craft anything for this build other than just, uh, you know, reconstructing different items and trying the different things. But uh, this is going to be my Stamina Arcanist uh, Arena build. So, And you can also use this for four-man content, solo content, uh, anything solo content, uh, world bosses, whatever you want, uh, this can be used. I wouldn't bring this into Trials. Uh, you'll probably piss your healers off. But uh, for, like, dungeon pushing, um, even hard modes, things like that, uh, this build is going to excel, um, especially in solo um, arena content like Vashran Hollows, Maelstrom Arena, things like that. So without further ado, I would like to showcase uh, this Arcanist build. So uh, let me just get into, well, let's start with the, uh, I guess we'll start with a character sheet. So we're going to pop a tripod. Uh, this is the primary um, potion that we're going to be using is crafted tripods. You can also use crown tripods. It's fine. We're going to pop that and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my character stats. So uh, the magic of recovery, health recovery, yeah, they're mid, but the stamina recovery is really nice. And we need that because uh, you'd be surprised why we need that, but we do need that because we're going to be using Cephaliarch's Flail a lot, and that costs stamina. And uh, we're going to be using that because enemies are going to be dying so fast uh, that our beam is going to keep going even after they're dead. So we're going to be canceling our beam a lot um, during ad pulls, unless you pull it all together, which you can, um, and just do one beam and kill everything. But a lot of the times, uh, you're going to need to reapply... Um, you know, you're going to need to get your crux back up to three uh, before you uh, go ahead and do that. And what that's going to do is that's going to lower your stamina by quite a bit. So uh, this is kind of the stats that I'm running. I got eight in the health, 56 in the stamina. And then uh, we've got major savagery and sorcery because we got an ability slotted and we're using our tame takeaway broth. You don't need to use this. You can use... Um, one good one is Jewels of Misrule, but that's going to lower your damage just a little bit. And then uh, another good one uh, is going to be Dubious Cameron Throne. And if you really want to be spicy, you can use um, like Sugar Skulls or um, some sort of tri-food. You can even use the Crown tri-food. I've done um, many things with the Crown tri-food. Um, and it's just fine. It's just a little less sustain and you need to kind of manage it a little bit more. But uh, we've got the lover for our Mundus. Uh, this is going to increase our penetration. Now, some people might disagree with me on this, but I think this is essential. And honestly, I'm, I'm running through content really fast with this. Um, so I, I took the, the loss on crit for the lover, and I think it's working out just fine. Um, so into our skill tree. Um, our primary beam is going to be Pragmatic Fate Carver, and the reason why uh, is because of that big old shield it gives. Um, it gives a giant shield and interrupt immunity, which that's bullshit, honestly. Um, you're going to get stunned a lot, and your beam's going to get interrupted a lot. So just be aware of that. Um, that's why we run recovery food, because we need to get our crux back a lot. Uh, we're constantly getting stunned. Uh, there is no CC immunity. Uh, no, I don't even, I don't know about interrupt immunity. I don't know if that's a PvP thing, if that's like, if that means on its face what it says. But it does not provide any type of CC immunity or anything like that. So, um, my recommendation uh, is to uh, run recovery food. Uh, Cephalix Flail, I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but anyway, um, it's really nice. It's kind of a, a big rectangle area, and it does cost a lot of stamina to do. So you're going to be casting this at least twice, sometimes three times, depending. Um, 
So that's going to be four and a half uh, to, you know, almost 7,000 stamina gone. Um, it does provide some crowd control to enemies, which is nice. Um, a lot of the smaller enemies will die, will die just with this ability alone. Uh, and it, uh, it lets you, <laughs> I don't know about this, but it lets you deal 5% increased damage to enemies drenched in abysmal ink. So apparently you just drench enemies with abysmal ink when you, when you splay your tentacles all over their face and, uh, lets you do more damage to them. So, ha ha, fuck you. That's kind of what I think about that. And then, uh, we're running Barb Trap because we're not running, uh, the Velothi Mythic. So, uh, we do want our major force, um... I chose the Stamina Barb Trap. You could do Race Against Time if you wanted to for some uh, crowd control immunity and speed. I don't think that's needed, um, so I go with Barb Trap. Barb Trap also gives you a nice dot with some hemorrhaging, uh, which is really good. Uh, if, you, if you don't know what hemorrhaging is, uh, hemorrhaging uh, is a nasty, nasty status effect that can be applied to you in 4-man content if you're tanking or anything like that. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, the newer bosses in the game have uh, like a hemorrhaging style bleed effect on you, and it's disgusting. Um, this is a flex, uh, but I like to keep it on uh, because when you uh, you get major savagery and prophecy, weapon and spell crit is increased on this, and um, you get minor berserk for five seconds after dealing critical damage from an enemy's flank. So if you manage to get behind an enemy, <laughs> good luck with that in arenas, but um, it's kind of a, a janky mechanic. So you, you probably will have it more often than not. But um, if you manage to do it, then you get extra damage, uh, which is nice. And then Quick Cloak, uh, really, really nice. 28 seconds of reduced uh, area attacks uh, by 20%, which is really nice. And then it pulses uh, every two seconds, uh, dealing damage, and it gives you a major expedition for four seconds, uh, which is super nice, like a little pocket rapids. Uh, this is kind of the controversial part, but this part works for me. Uh, so I've got the Languid Eye slotted on both bars. Um, it's, just, it's just the class um, ultimate. Uh, morph of Unblinking Eye. It's the one that stays still. Uh, you could use the fo the one that follows everything around, but that's not. I don't think that's needed. Um, and moreover, I, I don't even know if it does as much damage as this one does. So I would stick with this one. It's cheap and it's and it's pretty pretty nice. And the reason why I slot it there is because um, of this. So. Spell of Penetration, Physical and Spell Penetration increased by 991 per Herald with the Tome Ability slotted. So I've got 1, 2, 3 slotted. Um, so that's 3, um, that's 2973 uh, bonus penetration, which is what you kind of need when you're running all medium. Uh, so anyway, let's go back bar. Back bar, I'm running the Maelstrom Lightning Staff. Uh, we'll get to that later, but uh, Unstable Wall Storms. Actually, I should probably morph that. And I would suggest that you morph that too. I didn't realize I had that one on. I would morph it to the longer duration one, the one that's 12 seconds. Uh, that one's a little bit better. In fact, I will be morphing this. Uh, I did not realize I had unstable on. That's probably why my dots fell off a little faster. But basically, you run Crusher on this, and every four seconds, Crusher will proc for four seconds. Um, so, or every one second. No, so, all right. So the first tick Crusher procs for four seconds. And then it will proc again for four seconds. So if if you have the longer morph, I think it, it allows for an extra crusher proc. Um, either way, I think it's more damage and it gives you more time to get your, your bars on. So I would definitely uh, slot the other one. Uh, not, not this one, um, just the, the wall of elements. The longer duration one. And uh, then we got Fulminating Rune. Now this one's really cool. Uh, gives you gives someone like your allies a synergy, but um, actually no, this isn't the cool one. This is just another dot. But uh, you definitely want to keep this up, um, 100%. Uh, make sure this is up. It does do a lot of damage um, overall. 
And then inspired scholarship is in, in the next ability. Uh, this is really cool. So on either ability bar, you gain major brutality, and major sorcery. So that enables us to run our tripods, especially since we have uh, on the front bar, we have um, uh, Camo Hunter, which gives us savagery and sorcery. So, or, or wait, savagery and I think it's prophecy. That's it. So we get the we get all the benefits of having um, weapon and spell power pots, uh, but we're not having to run them. We can run tripods and sustain really well. Um, and of course, I've got an elemental susceptibility. This just strips down the armor even more uh, by 50, 59 and 48. And then we've also got. Uh, this is uh this is our majors so we run this and then uh if they do damage to us then they get stripped down even further uh 2974 and then uh it also generates uh crux for us as well just not as fast as the flail flail but so that's like 3000 and then that's another 6000 so that's 9000 extra penetration um and then uh with Let's see. So 9,000 extra penetration on top of uh, the 12,000 penetration we got. We're looking at like 21,000 penetration. So we're stripping down the bosses naked basically um, with this, which is great. This is exactly what we want. Big damage. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like, that's kind of what I run here. Um, dual wield, I got it all maxed out. Uh, I would suggest you do the same. Destruction staff, like I said, this is gonna get morphed. I don't even know why that's like that, but yeah, it's getting morphed. And because uh, honestly, like unstable wall doesn't really have the damage it used to. Anyway, it's not, in my opinion, it's not worth running. Medium armor is maxed out. Uh, all the skill points in there. Um, Fighters guild. These are just some extras that you can do. Undaunted, of course, uh, little passes, take those. I, I bought all these abilities in the crown store because I don't feel like grinding all this stuff out. But, I mean, if you're grinding it out, I would suggest that you just, you know, get, get all that leveled up. Um, then I'm a Dark Elf. The Dark Elf, uh, they have max magicka and stamina increase, which is nice. Uh, they got some flame resistance built in, which is uh, pretty good. It's okay. And then uh, weapon and spell damage increased by 258, which is okay too. It's pretty nice. Uh, max out your alchemy. Make sure you got your medicinal use. Uh, it's pretty easy to do nowadays, so just just get it done. Um, it will help you in the long run. And of course, I would max out provisioning too, um, which is probably the next thing I want to do, uh, just to get the, the duration increase on my uh, on my foods that I have and. Um, so let's go to let's go to inventory. I'm sure you guys are wondering what the hell I'm running. So you saw it there. Uh, so the daggers, I got uh, deadly. I got deadly on the front bar. Okay, so it's a Nern home with flame damage. So let's talk about deadly. Uh, two items adds weapon and spell damage. Three items adds crit. Um, four items as weapon and spell damage, and then the fifth item is increase the damage, your damage over time, and channeled abilities do by 15%. So that's pretty much like, that's pretty much this class in a nutshell, it's damage over time and channel. So um, just having that, having an increased, um, just flat right off the cuff is so nice. So, okay, so the first, it's Nern Hone Dagger with Flame. I'm sure this is going to surprise you, but it's a sharpened dagger on the offhand, um, which may be overkill. I could probably swap this out, um, knowing that I'm at like 21,000 pen. I could probably swap this out um, for, uh, let's see, I could probably swap it out for my charged uh, shock damage one which would be fine too um, so you could like you got a choice you could run sharpened or you could run uh charged but if run charge make sure it's like with a shock um enchantment on it uh, that like definitely super important um 
And there's another setup here I'm going to show you too. But uh, so the, the the Maelstrom perfected lightning staff um, infused with a weapon and spell damage uh, boost on it. Uh, it's just going to give you extra penetration on the back bar and then increases the damage of wall of elements. Well, I mean, by whatever, who cares? But um, it's it's nice. I think it gets buffed by Deadly too, since it's a dot. But um, the hat is going to be Valken Scoria uh, Divines with a stamina enchantment. And the reason why we're using a one-piece Scoria is for the 1487 uh, penetration that is involved. Now, with this setup, you could switch this out for something... Uh, like slime craw you can definitely use slime craw and get that crit up a little bit more um, definitely useful i would recommend uh, maybe putting on a set of light armor and getting your light armor skill leveled up too um, just so you get the benefit of running a light armor piece because right now i don't have that benefit and i'm running a light armor piece uh, which would be extra penetration again so i could definitely switch this build up a little bit but this is kind of for your medium armor enjoyers that uh, need need the pen so uh, for the body, I'm using Perfected Coral Riptide. Uh, the the last the five piece says increase your weapon and spell damage by up to 740, based on your missing stamina reaching the maximum at 33% stamina. Now, uh, with this uh, setup here, uh, with the recovery food, you would be like, well, well, muscle, why the hell are you running recovery food when you're running Coral Riptide? Well, I challenge you to go into the arena. And uh, since the monsters are going to die so damn fast with this setup, um, I would challenge you to run uh, your tri-stat food and then tell me what your sustain's like. And you can do that down in the comments if you are doing that. But um, an alternative to this uh, would be Order's Wrath. Um, and this, this would definitely get you up to your crit cap. Um, you, probably, you probably wouldn't hit it anyway, but... Um, you could run Order's Wrath instead of Coral Riptide, and it would be just fine. Um, and then you could go full-on recovery, uh, which we are doing anyway. Um, and you wouldn't see a whole heck of a lot of difference. And you could even, you know, once you did that, you could swap out the hat for Slime Craw if you wanted to. And you could even possibly, um, instead of doing a Sharpener Charge, you could do a Precise um, Dagger. So, um, and that would you'd still be at the uh, penetration uh, cap anyway, which is 18k. So, um, yeah, there's, there's ways to optimize this build a little bit, but I'm just giving you um, kind of a, a backbone on how, on how to build this. I haven't seen any good arena builds out there, so I wanted to make sure that I could put this out there for you guys. But anyway, so the necklace... Uh, so all the jewelry is bloodthirsty. Uh, it's deadly jewelry... A necklace and a ring and then we got the ring of the pale order uh this is a cornerstone of this build um i hate to say it i went into the arena with a velothi amulet and uh it wasn't it wasn't pretty uh there's not enough healing on this class i mean i could slot vigor but uh there's just not enough healing for all the damage coming in so um i would recommend ring of the pale order if you want nice easy and fast clears um definitely pale order so if you don't got it, go get it. Hey, uh, Future Muscle here. Uh, just a quick edit into the video. Um, I'm sure you noticed the different angle here. But um, so I realized I didn't put my CP in. So anyway, um, here is the champion points. Um, we have Exploiter on, Biting Aura, Thaumaturge, and Wrathful Strikes. Those are the uh, CPs and the... I believe this is a blue tree and then um, for uh, this tree we have uh, celerity uh, spirit mastery which helps us absolutely nothing uh, but I keep that on anyway just for four man content fortified and balanced vitality you could take off spirit mastery and put on um, what could you put on probably you could do strategic reserve if you wanted to um, a free roll dodge is nice and also a free break free is nice too so you choose but uh, that's what i'm running there and then uh, for the crafting tree what do we got treasure hunter for those beautiful treasure chests 
Rationer for a little bit of extra duration. Gifted Rider because we like to ride around fast. And Steed's Blessing because we like to ride around fast. Uh, we like to move around fast, excuse me. <laughs> That's pretty much it though. There's your champion points. Uh, back to the video. That's pretty much it. Um, let me know if I left anything out of this build. I don't think I did. Um, I don't think I need to go over all the skills and everything like that. Just copy and paste this build. Um, let me know if it works for you. Like I said, the Core Reptile can certainly be swapped out. Um, you don't need it. You can run uh, Order's Wrath. You could run Pillar of Nern. There's, there's a bunch of different sets you could run um, that could replace Coral Riptide, okay? So you don't need Coral Riptide to make this build successful. Um, in fact, uh, it it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense except for this, the major slayer, the minor slayer, I mean, um, that you get, which that's the whole reason why I run it. Um, my stamina does get fairly low occasionally, but it doesn't, it almost never goes below 50%, so I, I might be unoptimized, but I mean, I just got a 285k score um, in Vatishran with this, and I'll show you too real quick yeah 285 and um you know there's people that are doing better than me but there's a lot of people that aren't um so i think this build is fine the way it is uh for fast easy clears like th that was a 33 minute clear and i died once and it was dumb and i saved the whole video and i'm gonna show you guys like i'm gonna show you the last boss uh and then you know um I'm going to link that video onto this video, but uh, I'm going to show you my dumb death, which was basically, I I didn't know where the secret boss was, and I jumped off a cliff and died. So that was, it was totally voluntary. I didn't get killed by an enemy. I just, it was, yeah. Anyway. So <laughs> but with this, uh, with this setup, uh, that's what I just did uh, just a little bit ago. And then uh, this is, this is Wednesday. Um, I probably... I probably won't be it's the 30th of august this video might not go up for a few days but i just wanted to get this out there um i've also uh posted a 579k uh maelstrom which the the boss mashup is up on youtube um and then my best score was 289 um 289k in for the for the patch which is nice. It's like the highest I've ever gotten in Vatishran. And uh, like I'm super proud of it. And I'm super proud of this build. And I'm really surprised there's no other builds out there that I've seen anyway. Um, that are sort of like giving you guys the knowledge that you need to, to create a good Vatishran Hollows and Maelstrom Arena build. You can use this in... Dude, you could use this in Dragonstar and Black Rose too. Um, just swap a few things out according to what's needed with the group. But... Yeah, this this thing is this is legit. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, go ahead and give me a like. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, do that. Come on now, what are you doing? You're watching my videos and you're not subscribed? Seriously? Nah, I'm just kidding. You don't have to if you don't want to, but it would make me happy. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, and that's that's awesome. You guys are OP. Anyway, enjoy. Y'all have a great day. Bye.